welcome to this, our second service on this Sunday. Uh, welcome if you're visiting here, then please know that a very special welcome to you. I've received the following flower message. Uh, Barbara is not here today, is she? No. Mom, Barbara, happy 80th birthday on the 4th. What a milestone you have reached. May your year ahead be blessed with love and happiness. Lots of love, Joanne, Sean, Keenan, Tracy, and Tyler. So to Barbara, from all of us, uh, a happy, happy 80th birthday. Let us pray. <clears throat> Let us then give thanks to God. We give you thanks, O God, for your love, for you are indeed the maker of all the giver of all good things, and we bless you. Thanks be to you, O God. We give you thanks for the world's beauty and the changing seasons, and for the life that we have been given. We bless you, O Lord. We give you thanks. For Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lived and worked among us, we bless you, O Lord. We give you thanks. For his suffering and death on the cross, his resurrection to new life, we bless you, O Lord. We give you thanks. For Jesus' rule over all things and his presence in this world, we bless you, O God. We give you thanks. For the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who teaches and guides us, we bless you, O Lord. We give you thanks for the grace of the Spirit in the work of the Church and the life of the world. We bless you, O Lord. We give you thanks. We praise you, eternal God. We do all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, friends, our Bible reading comes to us from Luke chapter 11. And we're going to read from verse 5. Luke chapter 11, from verse Then Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, yet because of the man's boldness or perseverance, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who who ask him. Just so far in God's word, and we thank God for God's word. Amen. <coughs> we are a people who often feel like giving up. 
We are a people who often feel like giving up. Giving up on a relationship, a career, on hope, on love, whatever it may be. We are a people who often feel like giving up. And sometimes we need to give up on something in order to move forward, to carry on. And then there are times when we need to not give up if we would like or need to carry on or move forward. Things we need to hold on to in order to carry on. And I think prayer is perhaps one such thing. We are a people who often feel like giving up on prayer. Now I think that if we get to that place where we feel like giving up on prayer, that's not the real issue. I think that's just a symptom of something else, something deeper that's happening, and that's why we want to give up on prayer. Because prayer ultimately is about change. Prayer ultimately is about life in God's Spirit, about change, ultimately about a deeper union or connectedness with God. Ultimately, I think, that is what prayer is about. A deeper union with God in which we are being changed, which we are changed. Um, and sometimes, so, I think when prayer is like that, <coughs> and we come to know that, that it's not always so easy to stay with that, that we do give up on prayer. Because prayer is, really, we sang beautifully about God's Spirit earlier on. Prayer speaks deeply about a Spirit-filled life, um, a deeper union with God. And whoever seeks that deeper union with God, our passage that we've read earlier on in Luke chapter 11 tells us that prayer is like knocking on the door and Jesus will open. God opens the door when we seek that deeper union with God. Um, But I'm also very aware that we live in a world in which prayer has become something else for us. Um, and it's no wonder that we give up on prayer. And I want to say that if prayer has become something else for us, not a place of change, of deeper union with God, then maybe we should give up on prayer. Then maybe we should let it go. Um, because I think God invites us to, to a place where our prayer life uh, through God's Spirit is indeed a place of change, um, of a deeper union with God. And if prayer is anything else, then maybe it's one of those things we need to give up in order to move forward. Prayer has become easy in many ways, something on the surface of our faith. When you want to know what prayer really is like, you can go to those living in monasteries. The monks and the nuns throughout the ages has taught us how prayer is about change. That when you do pray, you take not just your own worries and concerns, but those of the whole world with you 
into that space, that sacred moment or place where you have this deeper connectedness or union with God. And God, God's Spirit changes you so that you can see more clearly. Things become more visible. And it's no wonder that we struggle with prayer and give up because that's our, that's our struggle, this deeper union with God where we can see more clearly um, God in this world. So prayer has become for us something on the surface, you know. We like to ask God for things, first and foremost, and sometimes that's all it is. Um, or we may want to just offer a sentence or two of praise, and that's where it stays, um, like we do here. But if prayer is just that for us, then it's one of those things we really need to give up on in order to get to what prayer ought to be for us. Because when prayer is really about union with God, I can promise you, God always answers prayers. I don't know of anyone in this world who has asked God for a deeper union with God and God has not opened the door for him or her. Knock and it will be open. Now today is about prayer and God's spirit um, in that place of prayer, a deeper union with God. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about prayer. Is that okay? So there are five types of prayers. Of prayer. The first one is the prayer of praise. We've done that earlier on through our music. We've offered prayer of praise. Um, there was a prayer when we sang, and that was the prayer of praise. So that's the first one. The second one is prayer of thanksgiving, where we give thanks to God. And when I prayed earlier on, that was our prayer of thanksgiving. The third one is the prayer of confession, where we acknowledge our weaknesses, our struggles, where we become more honest about ourselves. And then there's the prayer of intercession, where we pray for others. And then, please note, only then, only then, comes the prayer of, what's the nice word? Supplication. Prayer for ourselves. So I don't know how you would want to use these five types of prayer. Maybe on a Monday morning you can pray a prayer of praise. A Monday morning may be a good place for that. And by Friday you can get to a prayer where you pray for yourself and for your own needs and all the good stuff you still want. How does that sound? It's not a very enthusiastic response. <laughs> Could it have been more enthusiastic if I said on Monday morning, pray for ourselves and what we need for the week? <laughs> so those are the five types of prayer. But here's the point of the sermon today. Here's the point. If those types of prayers, of prayer are not, if they're not grounded in what prayer really is, a deeper connectedness with God, a deeper union with God, a place of change, inward change, change of the heart. If those prayers are not grounded in that, then, friends, maybe you need to let go of your prayer life. Maybe you need to... Because ultimately, you will be disappointed ultimately, you may not always get what you ask for. If that's all your prayer is about, and it's not grounded in a deeper union, at least a seeking for a deeper union 
with God. If your prayer doesn't seek that deeper union, then all these other prayers are like, what are they about, really? What are they about? Maybe we then need to let go of them so that we can hold on to what we need to hold on to in order to move forward. And that is prayer see, as seeking a deeper union with God. That is the place of God's Spirit. We, we prayed earlier on, Holy Spirit, the giver of life. That's the life the Spirit gives through our prayers. And that's when we can deal with all our other wanting to give up stuff. Because then we are filled with hope and renewal and love that God gives to us to a deeper union with God and grace and so much more that helps us with all those other things we need to give up in order to move forward and the other things we really have to hold on to if we want to move forward. For ultimately, we are a people who often want to, to give up. But God invites us and God says, come and pray, for God always answers our prayers. Amen. the Lord mighty God bless and keep you forever give you peace perfect peace strength for